Hello, welcome to my blog, Edith English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today, we are going to read American poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's beautiful poem, Nature. Longfellow, American poet of the 19th century, and his poetry is marked with simplicity, purity of tone, and obviously of simplest to the simple diction which is quite akin to children's poetry so he is more marked as a children's poet but the maturity of theme or its interest on the very philosophy of life sometimes drags the modern readers as well as the matured readers towards long fellow in understanding long fellow's poetry we must have to say one thing that even though the theme or its execution is simplest to the simple form in its deeper philosophical connotation in its deeper philosophical weightage the poem can be read by everybody he was most popular in his lifetime and in later halves in later half of the century as well as in and the modern time new interest has been drawn on longfellow to understand his depth of writing Longfellow's nature is a sonnet, the typical Petrachan sonnet, that is divided into two parts, octave and sestet. In the octave part, the relationship between that of nature with us is being stated. In the sestet part, the same reference has been given with a deeper philosophical understanding of how nature mother and we are related and how nature mother gradually puts ourselves into the perpetual sleep that is death the sonnet comes from italy through the hands of petrarch and dante it's a kind of a little piece of music the musicality and its lyrical format is very interesting part here in this sonnet too we have a typical petrarch and sonnet pattern and rhyme pattern so here in this sonnet we will find a gradual philosophical depth in the sestet part in the concluding lines which is called volta of the sonnet or the jump of thought or the maturity of understanding a particular poem in so many of the english writing as well as in other format of literature the vision of death or the understanding of the nature in its truest terms of life and the aftermath is being written by several of the poets another american poet emily dickinson has been a great exponent of that kind of writing in robert frost there is also a philosophical understanding of death in milton in Sally in Keats in Byron everywhere in every sort of English poetry there is a kind of understanding the very vision of death each and every poet has exhibited his own understanding his own philosophical understanding through, through a Christian note or rather in his own the multiple philosophical planks of Indian as well as Eastern as well as Western philosophy. So, in Longfellow's writing, the nature, you will find a kind of a vision or the understanding of the death or understanding of this life. In the octave part, we will find nature is being stating the relationship with that of us, with that of human being in its simplest way the little children are being compared with the human being and we are busy playing with our playthings and the nature mother gradually puts us 
or wants us or instructs us to, st to stop those playthings and gradually as willingly or unwillingly we are leaving those playthings with utmost care the nature puts ourselves into permanent sleep so that is the theme of this very poem in octave in sestet it has been devised it has been written in simplest to the simple meaning let's concentrate on this poem as a fond mother when the day is over leads by the hand her little child to bed half willing half reluctant to be led and leave his broken playthings on the floor still gazing at them through the open door so the symbolic statement of we as the little children playing with our playthings and that of nature the nature mother who has given birth to us is also luring us into the permanent sleep and that sleep is in grief so we are busy with our playthings in our lifetime so many of the playthings we have we are busy playing with our carnal desires we are busy in our youth with the appeal of senses in our maturity in the appeal of worldly affairs slowly and slowly we were busy with our playthings and we are so much involved in our family that we were much reluctant to leaving all this and taking the hand of mother and taking the hand of mother nature i or we are unwilling to lead ourselves into a rest as like that of the children who are busy with their playthings never willing to let those plays stop he is reluctant he is unwilling to leave those playthings because it attracts those things very much but despite of all these attractions the motherly care leads him or her into that permanent sleep the children who are busy with the playthings never willing to leave those but unwillingly the children is still looking at the mother as well as his playthings but the mother puts him or puts her into her arms and lures him or her into bed into sleep here the sleep is symbolically the sleep of lifetime that is death here the mother has been called fond mother mother is fond one loving one caring one when the day is over the day obviously from day beginning to day end from morning till night we are busy playing with our playthings that i have stated earlier so the day has been referred to the lifetime of us why the we are half willing half reluctant we are tired of playing our playthings we are tired of it but despite of tiredness the attraction of or the luring of all those playthings is such that we are unwilling to leave all this and lead ourselves or hold the hands of the mother earth so many of the playthings are littered on the floor they are half broken they are broken but our attachment with all those broken playthings are such that we are unwilling we are aging the youth is no more the rosy cheeks and lips are no more the days are gone but even we are busy with our playthings with our desires with our carnal aspirations of enjoyment but as our body are aging similarly those toys are also broken but the attracted we are so much obsessed with them that we are unwilling as like that of a children 
who are loving the old playthings more than the new air bought one because his love and attraction as well as his or her association with those articles are more prone than that of newer one the mother is holding her hand or his hand into the bed but still the children are looking at through the window and they are looking at those playthings broken and littered on the floor we are tired so tiredness prompts us to hold mother's hand but the attraction to those playthings are such that we are also having a close look at them even we are in oscillation and vacillation in which way to go we are sure to go and hold mother's hand and lie on bed but still gazing at those playthings even at our end ages even at our dying ages we are much obsessed with the playthings that we are no more having intact but such is the symbolic statement here that the motherly care or fondness of that mother is luring us is attracting us with the care and love to the grave that we will gradually lose the power of attraction to those art- earthly affairs and we will gradually lead ourselves into mother's arms into the bed of ultimate sleep philosophical assurance and comfort is there from mother's saint that i will buy you new playthings when the new day comes but this assuring and this comfort is not fully assured or fully comforted the ch- he is having that kind of obsession or attraction to that old plaything that he is quite unwilling to hold the mother's hand but again and again mother nature lures us attracts us with the assurance that into that philosophical consolation of lying in the mother's lap where from we are born so that is the ultimate comfort she exerts but we are little bit comforted by all these assurances and our earthly belongings are dragging us such and such that we are quite unwilling to live at this moment in seat of old playthings there should be no new art playthings these are the assurances it makes the symbolic statement is quite evident here the old playthings that means our physical mirth our attraction our sexuality our so called physical power mental strength will be renewed in the form of new birth that's why it states which so more splendid may not please him more i will even being promised that you will you will be given new plaything the next day the child is not willing to leave those plaything littered on the floor similarly we are so much attracted to our this lifetime that we are unwilling to leave our placid dress and enter into the grave or the very arms of nature so in the octave part it states a philosophical statement that the child and the nature mother like that of human being and nature mother has been related to children with their mother the plaything with their of associations are all being stated as child is being loved cared assured by their mother similarly we the human being are assured by nature mother in the promises of life in the promises of after life in the sestet part the tone is more matured it states 
सो नेचर डील्स विथ आस एंड टेक्स अवे आवर प्ले थिंग्स वन बाय वन एंड बाय द हैंड लीड्स आस टू रेस्ट सो जेंटली दैट वी गो आर्ट्स नोइंग इफ वी विश टू गो आर स्टे हियर द स्टेटमेंट इज क्वाइट फ्रॉम टू वन स्टेट फॉरवर्ड वन एंड हियर इज द भॉल्ट ऑफ थॉट और द चार्म और द मैच्यूरिटी ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन इट स्टेट्स that nature deals with us the same way as mother deals with her children gradually takes away our playthings our earthly belongings it might be our sex it might be our desires it might be our physical mart what by one and she is holding our hand so firmly but with care and lead us into the permanent rest the rest uh in the grave the ultimate rest in the name of death we are rather unwilling to leave all those things we are always want to be immortal but mortality drags us but with care with love with compassion like that of dickensons those charioted king the death with love and care we are dragged into the grave and in that moment we are in conundrum in confusion if we are willing to go or unwilling we can't decide at that moment there is the physical maturity at that moment which needs a rest a permanent rest from the troubles that we have told throughout our lifetime so we gradually lead ourselves into grave and that is with care with love from mother nature in the concluding line it again says being too full of slip to understand how far the unknown transcends the what we know here the philosophical weightage is given in the last couplet in the last two lines being too full of slip to understand at the end at the end of our life when the death is approaching the sleepy state of us is such engrossing that we cannot get the meaning of our existence at that moment because we are in sleepy mode we gradually lose our conscience into the earthly belongings into the earthly references and we lead ourselves into grave and that living is done by nature and it is with utmost love because if we are not in slave then the associations or the belongings to our past will put us into pain into labor into toils that is most hurting how far the unknown transcends the what we know it simply states that we don't know what is beyond what is unknown transcends there is vast eternity in front of us and that unknown region is the immortal region even we are mortal being will die the immortal is our soul and the vast eternity beyond that life after death is the vast unknown field her from with transcends ourselves changes ourselves into that new eternity new identity new reality and that reality is the vast eternity or vast transcending world meaning of eternity is hardly known by us but in that vast eternity in that vast eternity of everlasting fire of soul is waiting for us and we are gradually leading ourselves into that domain another notable point in the last line is the use of the da the what we know what we know is given the very importance with a doubt we don't know what is there after death so in that vast unknown nature leads us but there is no anxiety in us because nature with motherly love and care lead us on
So, I think you have got the meaning of this poem, Nature. It is quite a philosophical poem and a twist of the meaning is that, that you have to understand this poem from your own point of view, the vision of death or the aftermath of life. So nature is no foreign thing. So the cycle of our life continues with the aid of motherly care of nature. So if you have any doubt in understanding this poem, just pop up any question, I will answer. So like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.